Gretch, a new study suggests that folks with a college degree didn't know much more about our nation's history than those without one. Here's a question we showed you a little earlier. Forget about what Howard Wilson said with the answer. What was the source of the following phrase? Quote, government of the people, by the people, for the people. Was it the I Have a Dream speech, Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, or the Gettysburg Address? All right. Lieutenant General Cy Bunting joins us from D.C. He's the chair of National Civic literacy board and the answer Cy was uh, the Gettysburg Address and it was D so Howard Wolfson was, gets an A today but unfortunately <laughs> uh, elected officials people who've gone to college for four years they don't fare so well with questions like this do they no they don't as a matter of fact uh, the failure rate of the 2500 people we surveyed uh, was uh, 71 percent uh, in the United States, which is uh, which is pretty scary, and elected officials had a failure rate uh, greater than that of, of uh, ordinary citizens. So that's even uh, scarier. Uh, what's scary to me is. Uh you know, we talk every day about the uh, the branches, the separate branches of the federal government, and yet when given a choice, which could they name, the branches of government or the judges from American Idol, what they get right most often? Uh, Paula Abdul. Crazy. Uh, she comes out way ahead of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> but what I think is also just really amazing about this study is that the lowest ranked institutions, colleges that we think of at the top of the list, Princeton, Duke, Yale, Cornell, yeah. people scored the worst at those institutions? Well, it appears that uh, those schools are very famous, they're very prestigious, people want to go there, but not to study the kinds of things that citizens should be studying. Uh, and, and in our view, those things include U.S. history, uh, free market economics, international relations, political philosophy. Right. Most of those things are optional at schools like that, so the kids don't study we're, them. We're showing my alma mater, actually, just by chance, Stanford right there. But why is this important, Cy? Well, it's important if you're going to be a thoughtful and participating citizen uh, to make judgments uh, about, for example, elections, uh, policy, you should know the basic institutions that, that, that govern the country. For example, one of our questions asks, uh, who, who has the power to declare war? And over a third of our citizens think the president can declare war, when, of course, the answer is uh, Congress. Sure. You know, when you think about it, Cy, uh, the average person who goes up through the process of becoming a naturalized citizen, somebody who's born in Honduras or Uruguay or someplace else, winds That's up right. with a better knowledge of how things work in this country because, they, you know, they've got to take the test and study the, everything before they get uh, the okay to come on in. That's right. And, and these questions uh, are not funny questions. No. They're not kind of gotcha questions. They're, they're basic institutional questions about our country and how it runs. Like this one. Which of the following are the inalienable rights referred to in the Declaration of Independence? A, yeah. B, life, liberty, and property, honor, liberty, and peace. Uh, and so I know what that answer is, but I'm going <laughs> to let you tell us, Cy. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of I, I hope all Americans know that and believe in it. All right. Uh, your, <laughs> your website is AmericanCivicLiteracy.org, where viewers can take uh, some more civic tests on their own, right? That's right. All right. I hope they do better than most people. Yeah, no kidding. All right, Cy, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's thank great you to have you. Thank you for joining us. All right, straight so we're ahead. still tracking Brian.